Okay, let's work on this worked example. It says calculate the pH of a buffer solution at 298 Kelvin. Prepared by mixing 25 centimeter cube of 0.1 mole of ethanoic acid. So this is your weak acid. With 25 centimeter cube of 0.1 mole per decimeter cube sodium ethanoate. This is the salt. The Ka for CH3COOH is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 5. So probably you have noticed that this unit is wrong. It must be mole per decimeter cube. So correct it if in your book it's wrong as well. So <clears throat> this is the acidic buffer. So we can use this formula for finding the pH of the solution. In this formula, you need the pKa. But what is given here is Ka. So it's very easy. You can find pKa by taking negative logarithm from 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Okay, so it gives you the pKa that you can put it here. The concentration of the salt is given. The concentration of the acid is also given. But be careful. In the question, the concentration of the salt is given in one beaker. The concentration of the acid is also given in another beaker. When you mix them, their concentration changes. But if you look at this question, let me change the color of the pen. If you look at this question, the volume of the acid and its concentration is exactly the same as the volume of the salt and its concentration. In that case, when you mix these two solutions, in the final buffer solution, the concentration of the salt and acid would be same as well. Okay, so when in the logarithm format, the concentration of the salt and acid becomes equal, these, <clears throat> uh, this fraction becomes 1 because their concentration are equal. You can cancel out these two. So it becomes logarithm of the 1. And you know that the logarithm of the 1 becomes 0. Okay, so let's go to the next page. Here, the pKa is negative logarithm of this value is 4.74. And because there are equal volume and concentration of the acid and the base, the concentration of the acid and salt in the final solution would be equal. So the logarithm of this value becomes 0. And the pH is only equal to pKa. So the pH of the solution is 4.74. So this is very important because in the buffer solution, if the concentration of the acid and base is equal, the pH solution is equal to pKa of weak acid. For basic solution, if the concentration of the weak base and its conjugate acid or the salt is equal, then the pOH of the solution is equal to pKb of the base. Okay. This is very important. Because when you want to make a buffer with a desired pH, suppose you want to make a buffer with the pH 4.5, okay? So how can you pick up the acid? Which acid you have to pick up for making this buffer solution? You have to go to the IB data booklet or any reference table that you have and check which acid, its pKa, is almost same as the pH. So you have to pick that acid and uh, add its conjugate base or salt to that to make the buffer solution. So in the other word, the pH of the buffer solution is around pKa of the weak acid. Okay, let's go to the next example. It says, how would you prepare buffer solution of pH 3.75? starting with methanoic acid, which is weak acid, and NaOH. So here you have weak acid, but you don't have its salt. What do you have? You have the strong base. As I have mentioned earlier, if you want to make a buffer solution and you don't have the salt of that, you only need to neutralize half of the acid with a strong base. In that case, you make a buffer solution, which there is weak acid, and its conjugate base and their concentration would be equal because you have neutralized half of the weak acid, okay? So if you look at the IBA data booklet, 
The pKa for methanoic acid is 3.75, exactly the same as the pH of the buffer solution that we want to make it. As we mentioned here, if the concentration of the acid and salt is equal, then the pH of the buffer solution would be equal to pKa. So what we do in this case, we take methanoic acid, we neutralize half of the that with NaOH. So in the final solution, the concentration of the acid and its conjugate base or the salt would be equal. And based on this equation, the pH of the solution would be 3.75, what we needed. Okay, so let's move on to the next work example. It says how much 0.1 mole per decimeter cube butanoic acid solution and solid potassium butanoate should be used to make one decimeter cube of pH 5 buffer solution. So what is given here to you is the concentration of weak acid. So you have a weak acid here. Its concentration is 0.1 mole per decimeter cube we want to make a buffer solution but the volume of the buffer solution needs to be one decimeter cube so what do we have here we have one decimeter cube or one liter of 0.1 mole per decimeter cube butanoic acid but if you have only butanic acid, you have not made a buffer solution. You know that you need its conjugate base, which can be prepared by its salt. So its salt is potassium butanoate. The potassium butanoate dissociates completely in the solution. It produces butanoate, which is the conjugate base for this acid. But it says solid potassium butanoate. It means the salt that you want to add here is the solid. So you must find how many gram of this salt add to this water, or sorry, add to this weak acid, one decimeter cube of 0.1 mole per decimeter cube of the butanoic acid to make a buffer solution. But the pH of the buffer solution must be five, okay? So if we use the same equation. What we need is pKa of the butanoic acid is given in the IB data booklet. It's pKa is 4.83. So here pKa is 4.83. The pH of the solution that we want to make is 5. The concentration of the weak acid is given here is 0.1. So we can find the concentration of the butanoate. So if we go through this, we can find the concentration of the butanoate ion. Here, we bring this one to the other side. So it becomes 5 minus 4.83 or 0 0.17 equals to logarithm of the butanoate ion over the concentration of the acid. We take the anti-logarithm from the both sides, we reach to this term. So from here, if you want to find the concentration of the butanoate acid, sorry, butanoate ion, you just need to cross multiply this one so it becomes 0 0.1 times 1.5, it becomes 0 0.15 mole per decimeter cube. So here we find the concentration of the butanoate ion, but not the mass of this salt. Okay, so if you have the concentration, and this is the final volume of the solution, so you can find the mole of the butanoate ion. It's concentration times volume. The concentration is 0 0.15. The volume is 1. So the mole becomes 0 0.15. So this 0 0.15 is the mole of the butanoate ion. Where the butanoate ion comes from? It comes from the potassium butanoate. So if you need if you want to make 0 0.15 mole of the butanoate ion, you need 0 0.15 mole of the potassium butanoate. So the concentration of the potassium butanoate that we have to make it is 0 0.15. So we need 0 0.15 mole of the potassium butanoate. How many gram would be that? would be the molar mass of the potassium butanoate is 126.12. So the mass 
equals to the mole times molar mass so the mass of the potassium butanate or the salt that you need is 19 gram so you take 19 gram you add it to one decimeter cube of 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube butanoic acid solution so now in the final solution you have this weak acid and you have butanoate or its conjugate base or the salt so you have made the buffer solution with the pH that you need and that is pH 5 so we have several assumptions here two of the assumptions we have already talked about that and that is the concentration of the butanate ion or conjugate base is same as the concentration of the salt because we assume that the salt completely dissociate to potassium ion and butanoate ion on the other hand the concentration of the butanoic acid in the equilibrium or in the buffer solution is same as its initial concentration because only small part of that dissociate and the third one which is new we said we have to take these 90 gram of the salt let's go to the previous page we need 19 gram of the salt and we have to add it to 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube of the solution we assume that by adding these 19 gram of the salt to the solution the volume of the solution doesn't change that is the last assumptions that we have so no volume change occurs on mixing here's written the solution but you have to say no volume change occurs on the mixing salt to the acid or by adding salt to the acid 